Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Naval defense is an area that is in constant development, with endless vessels appearing with different capabilities and technologies. This is the case with the powerful and imposing Arleigh Burke and Zumwalt class destroyers. These ships have been one of the main elements of the United States Navy and global naval defense. The development of these boats demonstrates how engineering is taken to the limit and encouraged by the creativity of designers. The Arleigh Burke class destroyers are heavily armed multi-mission ships that form the backbone of the U.S. fleet. Its development began in the early 1980s, making it one of the longest running shipbuilding programs in Navy history. Its great offensive capacity can be seen in its varied number of defense systems. This includes the 45 54 caliber lightweight gun used to engage in surface and aerial targets. Adding to its defensive capability is the Phalanx Sea Wiz, a rapid fire gun system used to destroy anti ship missiles. This gun is controlled by a computer and is aided by a radar system that gives the weapon a deadly precision. Keeping with the development of the Navy's power and versatility, the Zumwalt program started in 2001 to create the 21st Century Destroyer. The main goal was to build a leading ship that was useful for land attacks and littoral missions, and had capabilities that could defeat current and future threats. To achieve this, the ship was designed around its two advanced gun systems turrets, firing long-range land attack projectiles that reach up to 63 nautical miles. However, Manufacturing those projectiles was too costly, which ended in replacing that technology with new hypersonic missiles. This, combined with the features like the total ship computing environment infrastructure, makes it open for future upgrades and advancements in mind. Those advancements are powered by the integrated electric propulsion system that can send electricity from its turbo generators to the electric drive motors or future weapons. This includes prototypes like the electromagnetic railgun, which uses a strong electromagnetic pulse to shoot projectiles. Such technology makes the weapon capable of launching projectiles at hypersonic speeds, reaching extended ranges compared to traditional artillery. A gun like this can fire up to 5 million amps, or 1200 volts, within 10 milliseconds. This is why only a ship like the Zumwalt could currently power this as its IPS can deliver up to 4,160 volts. The Zumwalt program originally intended to build 32 destroyers. However, only three vessels have been commissioned. This was due to the high cost of developing and implementing experimental technologies like the vertical launching system or the previously mentioned long-range projectiles. Oh. 
Development for all three ships ballooned to $22.5 billion, which, alongside budget constraints, led to cutting the program short. Yet, the three vessels are still valuable warships that are being used as bases for implementing new technologies and creative solutions. Designed to operate in nearshore environments, the littoral combat ships consist of two small surface class vessels capable of defeating asymmetric threats in the littoral. These two vessels, the Freedom Variant and the Independence Variant, were designed and built by two industry teams. Lockheed Martin was in charge of building the steel monohull Freedom, while General Dynamics Bath Ironworks created the aluminum design of the Independence. I think that LCS is where the future of the Navy is headed, uh, between more automation or maybe plug-and-play missions. Uh, and empowering one sailor to do more than one job. LCS ships are designed for high speed and agility, making them ideal to respond quickly to threats near shallow waters. Also, the ship's design made it possible to reconfigure it for various roles by changing the mission module equipment, like weapon systems or sensors. This versatility has led to the deployment of LCS ships to several areas of strategic interest in the United States worldwide. This is showcased with the 5th Fleet operations to the Middle East in 2022 being the first time a littoral combat ship has operated with such fleet. makes us proud to be here, kind of a standpoint that yes, we did it, and at the same time humbling knowing that we made a gateway for our future LCSs to come out here or possibly be stationed. LCS adaptability is put to the test with the use of its flight deck for flight operations capable of accommodating multiple helicopters. This area is over one and a half times bigger than traditional surface combatants, making it possible to launch aircraft of various sizes. Usually, its hangar bay is equipped with two MH-60 helicopters, or UAV MQ-8 Fire Scouts. This ability to support helicopters and UAVs enhances the LCS's mission flexibility, allowing it to perform various tasks, including intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. However, more than just intelligence missions, the LCS is fully prepared to engage in offensive operations and equipped with high-tech weaponry. This includes the naval strike missiles designed to engage and destroy surface targets at long ranges with high precision. Its effectiveness has been proven in several exercises, like the Pacific Griffin near Guam. This arsenal also includes the Sea Ram launcher, which was designed to offer improved ship self-defense. Using independent sensors derived from the failing SeaWiz greatly enhances the guidance capabilities of the RAM missile. 
with the LCS modular mission packages. This weapon system can be easily accommodated in the vessel, considering the space, weight, and power requirements of such a tool. Besides missile launching systems, the LCS can integrate weapons like the Mark 110 Mod Zero 57mm gun mount, serving as a multi-purpose, medium caliber gun. By firing up to 220 rounds per minute, this gun is effective against threats like small boats, patrol vessels, and other small surface vehicles. The high-speed, powerful capabilities of this system was demonstrated during the combat system's ship qualification trials in the Pacific Ocean. This shows all the capacity an LCS can have, with its long list of weaponry making it deadly and unique. Complementing LCS Operations the common unmanned surface vessel is an uncrewed surface vessel designed for mine countermeasures, surface warfare, and intelligence operations. This vessel can be launched from ports, well decks, LCS configurations, and other vessels of opportunity. It is designed to match the weight and handling limits of a conventional rigid-hulled inflatable boat. Also, it has a modular architecture that allows it to be easily reconfigured depending on the mission requirements. I think there's a tremendous potential use for the unmanned surface uh, vessel, just like aerial or subsurface, and you know what those tools can do for our Navy security force that protects and provides a safety blanket over all of our installations. Inside the USV family, the Mantis T-38 Devil Ray was specifically engineered for inshore environments, including shallow coastal waters. It is based on a high-performance dual Sponson platform known for its stability and powertrain, giving it high burst speeds ranging from 70 to 100 knots. This design is also responsible for its capability to access areas inaccessible to larger vessels, providing unique capabilities for surveillance and reconnaissance in seaside areas. USVs play a crucial role in current naval operations by offering unique capabilities and solving various challenges. Their design focuses on having a low profile with reduced acoustic and electromagnetic signatures, making them perfect surveillance tools without alerting potential threats. Most of them are based on modular construction, allowing for variation of their payloads and making them adaptable to different mine threat environments. Their communication and control systems use an array of sensors, going from radar to acoustic receivers, and are built to be redundant to reduce failure. All those capabilities are shown and constantly tested during the military exercises done worldwide, including the Rim of the Pacific, This offered a unique opportunity to fully extract the potential of the newly developed vessels while sustaining cooperative relationships among the participants. As navies continue to modernize and challenge emerging threats, the importance of limited but advanced ships and surface vessels keeps increasing. This is why the emergence of ships like LCS and USV will be more and more frequent. 
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.